I'm Dr. Philip Snell. I'm in Phoenix at uh, the DNS uh, seminar that's being done here by Pavel Kolaj, uh, and I'm with his uh, cohort, uh, Alana Kobosova. I was hoping that we could possibly get Alana to discuss some of the key concepts of the DNS philosophy towards uh, physical medicine. Uh, Alana, one of the things that uh, has been noticeable by me as I've gone through the first courses um, with you guys is a, a an acute focus on the importance of good respiratory patterns and good breathing. Can you talk just a bit about why that's important in the DNS uh, perspective? Well, what Carl Levitt actually taught me was that stabilization and respiration, that's one unit, it can be separated and no movement can be normal or ideal unless the type of breathing is not ideal and that we have to analyze and treat both. And I think the biggest issue in rehabilitation is the definition of functional norms. Anatomical norms are easily defined. If we look into Czech or English or French book, for example, there will be the same anatomical norms. But if you look to, to the books to ser and you search for a definition of ideal gait pa or ideal posture, ideal breathing stereotype, you will learn different definitions from a different authors. And the DNS is a concept which is based on developmental kinesiology. So we generate ideal stereotypes, ideal functional stereotypes from the developing baby and from the patterns of ideal development. And so we observe baby, how stabilizes the body and how the baby moves. And the big argument to us is that if baby has normal brain, ideal brain, the stereotypes baby has been using will also be ideal because brain controls the muscles and the muscles have a great impact on skeleton formation and skeleton maturation. So if baby has ideal brain, has ideal stereotypes, and also the skeleton is maturing in an ideal way. And so we derive ideal stereotypes from developmental kinesiology and normally maturing baby. And we want our goal in the DNS is to retrain the same stereotypes as we can observe on ideal baby. Uh, we've seen that in, uh, in several of the uh, different professional athletic venues, we're seeing athletes starting to embrace these concepts as well. And you're seeing that uh, using those developmental programs, you're able to, that, that are inherent in, uh, in babies, that uh, when we take those same patterns in a, in a human with pain or movement dysfunction, then we can have an impact on them for the better, right? Right. And why is that? What we have to do in our analysis, basically DNS, diagnostic, and even therapeutic strat strategies are that we only compare the patient stereotype with the ideal baby stereotype. and. What Carl Levitt told me many years ago was that I have always to look for a key link, for a key dysfunction. And so DNS offers a set of dynamic tests which allow us to search for the key link, for the key dysfunction. And so these dynamic tests, the stereotypes, I just compare the stereotypes with the baby stereotypes. And wherever I find a dysfunction, if it's abnormal stabilization of a shoulder blade or weak deep neck flexors or com uh, compromised stereotype of breathing or insufficient intra-abdominal pressure regulation, whatever I ident identify to be abnormal with my training, I have to fix this and I have to restore the stereotypes as defined by ideal development. And so DNS, it's not really the technique, but it's approach and it's educational system. I have to guide the patient with my hands. I have to utilize verbal instructions and I have to teach the patient how to restore ideal stereotypes and how to deal with him, his pain himself because and that's another quote by Levitt who told me that
patient's muscles will always do better job than those of the best clinician. So I have to guide the patient, I have to assist him and teach him how to deal with his pain himself. So Alana, one of the key concepts in DNS seems to be um, a focus on training uh, those of us in the world who have lost the ability to breathe well, how uh, not only to use the diaphragm for good respiration, but also to use it for stabilization and helping to stabilize the core. Can you talk to me a little bit about uh, how that figures into the DNS program? We have to realize that diaphragm has a twofold function, respiratory function and stabilizing function. And again, we can start with developmental kinesiology model here. Newborn baby in a newborn, we can only see respiratory function of a diaphragm. However, later, between four and six weeks of life, baby starts to lift the head and starts to lift the legs above the table. This is the time when the diaphragm starts to fulfill simultaneously function for respiration and for stabilization. And very often this simultaneous function is compromised not only in children but also in adult patients. We have to realize that we need co-contraction, balance function between anterior and posterior musculature to stabilize all our spinal segments. For the next stability, I need ideal contraction between flexors and extensors. However, to stabilize my low back and lower thoracic segments, I need ideal balance between pelvic floor, diaphragm, all the sections of the abdominal wall and extensors. Diaphragm, abdominal wall and pelvic floor, these muscles pressurize intra-abdominal content. They increase intra-abdominal pressure and help to stabilize my back from front and that's really critical for my stabilization, for my ideal posture, and if this function is compromised in patient, it must be restored. Excellent, I, uh, I really appreciate you taking the time uh, talking, uh, talking to me a little bit about this so that we can learn more about what the DNS program is all about. Thank you very much, it was my pleasure, and maybe I would like to finish with a quote by Professor Levitt who says that he who treats only the sight of pain is lost. So we have to see the whole clinical picture. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent.